All right, campers, let's do it. Okay, greetings to everyone. Uh, this is uh, uh, toxic Calvinism, or why are Calvinists, at least some of them, so angry, part two, hopefully. And uh, I have promised that this ain't going to be as long as the first part. And uh, yeah, um, okay, but uh, I'm not that certain about it, but I'll try to keep it uh, shorter. Okay, so this is the part two in this, that series about toxic Calvinism or why do we have to be uh, douchebags or nasty people. Uh, we all know and met and maybe we've been ourselves kind of nasty individuals on the internet who uh, always ready to condemn somebody, very quick to judge and slow to bless and to accept and so on. So this is kind of a problem. And... Uh, Yesterday, when I made the first part, the first installment, uh, somebody commented in along the line that, uh, well, it's on social media that we were kind of being jerks and so forth, but not face to face. It's just, uh, and I replied, yeah, psychologically, yes, it's kind of uh, given the fact that many of us are uh, tend to be, you know, losers and cowards. But we do need a place where we can kind of blow our gasket every once in a while. So on the Facebook appears to be a safe place because we can be nasty to people and uh, n nothing's going to, uh, you know, come our way by way of return. You know, we're not going to get uh, a blowback. So, <clears throat> so that explains. But here in this series, hopefully, we're not dealing with psychological uh, motives and that sort of thing. Uh, but we're looking for theological uh, explanation and biblical perspective, okay? Because uh, I remind you, I'm a fundamentalist, being reformed guy, confessional. But uh, to me, uh, scripture is is the only authority, not not even the final, but the only source of authority. And, and uh, but this is a huge thing, you know. And uh, in the first video, I. Um, made reference to what happened about two years ago or so when R.C. Sproul died and uh, and there was this, uh, you know, kind of jeering and sneering and some people say, well, he went to hell immediately because he was a tolerant Calvinist and so forth. And, and I went emotional. And uh, by the way, I don't want to be his advocate. I don't think he needs an advocate now. And, uh, and uh, I'm not trying to defend R.C. Sproul. But at that point, to me, it kind of, appeared to kind of a strange behavior. So I reacted against it. I uh, recorded a couple of videos. Again, I took him down because they were not very well thought out. They were very emotionally charged and so on. But uh, as we think about those uh, uh, things that, uh, namely, why are Colin is so angry and very quick to condemn uh, uh, people and so on, uh, in, uh, in seeking, uh, you know, answers to that uh, phenomena, I uh, drew, drew attention to uh, one um, saying of uh, Steve Brown, which, you know, another name that I'm not going to endorse, you know, or promote here uh, in this video. But uh, he was a, he's a Presbyterian uh, uh, preacher of a sort, and he has a key life. So minister was uh, used to be located someplace in Florida. I don't know. And it's been decades since, uh, you know, last time I heard his uh, preaching or teaching. Anyway, he's got a good, pleasant voice and he tells good jokes. He's a great entertainer. Uh, other than that, I mean, I don't think there's much to say about his so-called ministry. But he does say sometimes uh, things that uh, can be con considered. And uh, in one of his series, he... Uh, uh, talks about different lies which affect our thinking. And uh, in one tape was uh, titled The Lie of Theology, uh, where he says that propositions don't save you. It's Jesus that saves you. Okay, and I thought about it, you know, kind of stuck with me. And uh, I'm a propositional guy myself. And we all believe that the gospel of our salvation is a set of propositions. I mean, if you don't, if you deny those propositions, if you just disbelieve them, how can anyone judge you to be saved in the first place? Uh, and uh, as we think of those things, again, this is, a boy, uh, there's just so many issues uh, around, this, around this topic, okay? Uh, the question of 
regeneration comes up and or the salutus even how how we're saved you know and uh, and last time i kind of stressed rather awkwardly that of course that fundamentally we're saved by the blood of jesus christ and all of the elect were justified by his cross work and romans 4 25 puts that question to rest because he was delivered uh, through our deviations and he was raised through or because of our justification of our being declared righteous he wouldn't have been raised he couldn't have uh, arise from the dead if if uh, even a single sin which he bore in our behalf all of our sins were laid upon him and you guys know it, so that this transaction had to be completed. So when he rose from the dead, all of his elect people of all ages from the beginning of days to the end of life, I mean, all of this age in Old Testament saints and the true church and old generations which haven't been born and so forth, they've all been collectively, uh, corporately justified in his cross work and his resurrection from the dead is actually a public announcement that yeah it's been accomplished so we have been justified and this is a you know it's a done deal it's been accomplished on the cross okay and uh and we we talked last time i mean yesterday uh, about the fact that uh, some reformed people and uh, calvinists uh, uh, southern greece baptists they stress justification through the instrumentality of faith and this faith must be in the set of propositions then the, uh, there must be correct propositions so if you don't believe them that you're not the regenerate they, they consider yourself uh, or anybody who does who stumbles over that they're lost and so forth now, by the way, the term lost, uh, some people think that uh, since I've kind of defended sprawl, I'm not going to do it the same. I mean, I, mean, I don't know about sprawl, okay? I, uh, I don't want to defend somebody who is at least part of the time a man pleaser, and he was a man pleaser. I mean, I, otherwise, I can't explain some of the things that he said that, uh, you know, that really make you want to puke. You know, all the drivel about uh, Billy Graham, that he he's going to be so close to the throne of God. it will be kind of the periphery on the outskirts that I won't be able to see him. Remember, he was asked a simple question. Well, given the differences between uh, uh, Callas and Armenian, is what about Billy Graham? Somebody posed that question at some point and said, uh, uh, do you think you're going to see Billy Graham in heaven? Uh, and R.C. said, well... I won't see him. And everybody almost choked. He's like, oh boy, he's going to say it. He said, well, because and the reason I'm not going to see him because he'll be so close to the throne of grace and I'll be so, you know, so far from somewhere and, you know, kind of on the, almost in the outer darkness of the, in the borderline that I won't be able to see. Uh, of course, that there's this, you know, a despicable drivel to say the list and so on. so i'm not going to defend rc but nevertheless uh my position stands in this in, in the sense that uh i don't think it's necessary for us to walk around condemning people and and saying that most assuredly this person went to hell and so forth it ain't our business okay so uh but <clears throat> in these discussions the question of order salutis how precisely according to scriptures that uh, we're saved or being saved. And, uh, and of course, as I already said, that uh, we're justified by Christ's offering once and forever. Who for by one offering, he's made forever, uh, he's made perfect for the them that are being sanctified, uh, Hebrews 10, 14. And by this will, we've been sanctified by, again, the offering of his body, that's, Hebrews 10.10, 10. I'm not, you know, this is not an exact quote, but um, <clears throat> so that's as far as what's been done on the cross. Then comes the Holy Spirit and regeneration. And here I kind of I stand almost, almost in the same place where the primitive Baptists and some other folks who insist on the, and by the way, Herman Hoxima, who's a PRC guy, also insisted on the immediate, uh, he was not a Baptist, as you know, but uh, he also 
insisted on the immediate Holy Spirit, immediate in the sense that it is by, without any means that the Holy Spirit first implants the ear that you may hear and eyes that you may see, and then you, you know, you believe, you see, and so forth. But the primitive Baptists are not sound, at least the majority of them, or some of them, when they say that uh, the being born again is the salvation, and so that a person can be born again by the Holy Spirit of God without any means, without preaching, uh, without the word uh, spoken to you, just in immediate uh, mysterious way, you're uh, regenerated, you're born again, and then you can just proceed your entire life being as pagan as can be, and then die and then go to heaven. Because you've been born again, uh, and, and you know this this uh, teaching. I, I consider it to be a blatant heresy. You know, not every primitive. I mean, I know some primitive Baptists who deny this, who repudiate this, uh, but um, some of them do believe this. In any event, uh, regeneration. I also affirm that regeneration, or we may call it inception. Okay, the first part of it, at least. Before this life, the new life, is brought out, is brought out to light, the life in you formed by the Holy Ghost through his mysterious power as the wind bloweth where it listeth and so forth. And I agree with, uh, with the primitives on this and with other people that, well, first of all, look, when you uh, read about uh, a parable of the sower, of, uh, okay, you know, the seed is being sown in different places, the stony ground and, and wayside of the road and so forth, and kind of bad soil. And then here comes the good soil. Now the question is, how come? What makes it good? Nothing is good and no one is good, but God is good. No one does any good. So before the soil of human heart can be considered good, it must be made good. It must be plowed, prepared by the Holy Ghost. And there, and here you have this doctrine of the Holy Spirit, immediate regeneration, that he must, before you can see. Uh, here's the point where the primitive Baptist uh, tradition uh, uh, errs. They like uh, to quote from John 3 that uh, without being born, uh, you know, may, can, cannot see, you know, a person cannot see the kingdom. Well, seeing is actually believing according to the same evangelist John and John 6, seeing and believing. And by the way, we can't, we can't see with our uh, eyes of flesh. So the spiritual sight is the same as uh, believing. In point of fact, the uh, the classical definition of faith as seeing that which is unseen and the uh, assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen that by faith we kind of we perceive and we see things even though we can't see with our eyes of flesh we all agree on that right so uh before one hears the gospel or sees the kingdom in the face of jesus christ yes the holy spirit comes first then, though, and here I part ways with the primitive Baptist tradition. You don't just proceed and, and just uh, kind of in the dormant uh, uh, state your entire life. No, you're born again unto something. The, the need, I mean, of regeneration is that you may see the kingdom, which is believe the gospel. So, and then the gospel comes. Then the seed of the gospel, it it drops down on the good soil. It is now prepared. It is, it's made good by the Holy Spirit of God. Then you hear in response. And here's the tricky part. The gospel precisionists, new term, gospel precisionists say that, okay, granted, I mean, you can be prepared by the Holy Ghost, but then you got to believe the gospel as the set of propositions encapsulated in, the, for, for instance, in 1 Corinthians 15, that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures and so forth, which basically encapsulates and uh, sums up his everything that he did for us on the cross, and the meaning of his offering, that it's propitiation, and, and all, all of those things. And, uh, and you have to believe those, and only as you believe them 
you can be judged as a saved or a converted person. Okay. All right. I mean, it sounds very orthodox. I don't have a problem with that. Almost. Well, Brandon Kraft uh, made a comment underneath the comment se- I mean, in the comment section under the link of my video yesterday, and he posted an article of his where he kind of talks about the role of the Holy Spirit and how he works. And he, in that article, uh, you got to read it yourselves, of course. Uh, he, he, uh, in, I mean, essentially, he defends the process of conversion and the role of the Holy Spirit. He says epistemological. Uh, he means to say that the Holy Spirit opens your eyes and so forth. He leads you to the truth and you grow, but it, it can be a process. 